Thanks to the supporters and channel members, Stephen Paul. I mean, I was planning on having a, a fairly quiet summer. I think the squad is almost there. Yeah, 80 million pounds. It's, um, it's a lot of budget. How an on a scale of one to ten, how annoyed would he be if I just spend it all to bring Enoch Abagai back? Hello and welcome to part 151 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special at the end of... I mean, I guess it's the best season in the club's history. We equaled our highest ever finish, third place in the Premier League. We got to the semi-final of the Champions League. We're a, with, That's with an average age of, I mean, I don't even know, 19, 20. The future is very bright here at home. We haven't won anything this year, but it does feel like we're, we're on the cusp of greatness as long as we can keep this team together. And that is the key for this summer, more so even than the players we're looking to bring in. I think we've reached the point now where it's unlikely we're going to bring in a significant number of players who are going to change that first team squad. And there might be an 18-year-old superstar, similar to Kleber, who comes in and makes a difference like Kleber did last summer. We might go for Enoch Abagai um, to shore up the defence, which I think is probably not the stupidest thing I could do with the money. But I don't think we're going to be rebuilding the team. Um, it's a very, very good team. They're very young and they're going to get better. The key is not to lose Veloso, not to lose Park, not to lose McKenna. You get the idea. We've got to keep this team together because if we can keep them together, it feels like it's only a matter of time before we win the Premier League, before we win the Champions League with these boys. I don't think you need to add anyone more. We'll just get there with these boys. We've just got to keep them all at the club. So signings from last summer. Um, Kleber got signing of the season. Obviously, he started incredibly brightly, um, coming in, scoring. I think he got seven goals in his first seven games or something ridiculous. Massive threat on that left-hand side early on. Um, he had two or three little niggling injuries from kind of November, December time onwards, though, and really struggled to get back to any kind of form from there. And um, we ended up playing him in central midfield as the season went on as well as Ian really came into his own and took Kleber's spot on that left-hand side. Um, I think Kleber probably, in my mind, is now competing with McKinna for the box-to-box -box midfield spot. But it's still a very good first season. 29 games played, 14 goals, a 7.12. If we're bringing in 18-year-olds this summer, we're playing 29 games, 28 games like Jovanovic did, then we're doing something right because I don't think we're going to have too many more players that come in and play that much football in their first year at this point. We're more likely to have them go down the Marcelo route, who came in in January, uh, was excellent, scored three goals in his first three games, but still only started four games. I think all three of those goals were as substitute appearances. We started him for a few games, wasn't quite as effective, but showed what he could do when he grabbed those goals. Jamie Much is another one who I'm very excited to see draft back into the team. Mark Kelly, Pedro Guerrero, they need to get a little bit more involved and um, very much on the fringes um, this year. But I don't know, would things have worked out differently in the Champions League if we'd have brought on Pedro Guerrero at left back and not shuffled the defence around? Who knows? Um, results wise, Mrs. Wormuth was looking for us to finish in the top half of the table. We got third place for the second year running, actually finishing on 75 points for the second year running as well. So we're a, we're a consistent third place, 75 point team. There is still a big leap to go from 75 points to 89, 90 points, which is what we need to win the Premier League. We need to convert um, five of those defeats into victories, really. That's the, that's the key. So, uh, so those little games, I mean, you can probably pick a few out on here. Losing to Stoke, um, losing to Leicester, maybe. Uh, we lost to West Brom. We lost, I mean, losing against Manchester United is fine, but Brighton, Wolves, they're the games that need to be turned around from defeats. We lost to West Brom twice. West Brom did the double over us and finished 14th. That's the kind of thing we need to eliminate from our game. And then we've got a chance of becoming champions. Interesting to see that we've maxed out our attendance again. The, the stadium has been expanded multiple times. It's still not big enough. We've got all that money in the bank. I wonder if Mrs. Wearmouth will let us have another extension or maybe look to build us yet another new stadium. Um, we're on an A- minus for competition performance. So as you would expect, we're overachieving in everything. Um, highlight of the season, that 6-0 win over Man United. I mean, that was, that was a mad moment. I thought we were going to win it all from there. And we're still a four-star team. We talked about this last summer. We really need 
to tick over to four and a half star to be absolutely confident we're not going to lose our superstars. I will try not to lose them this summer. The sooner that hits four and a half stars, though, the sooner we know we're safe. And it really is just a case of waiting for us to hit the finish line at that point. Money is flowing in like there's no tomorrow. £90 million pounds of competition prize money in this year. Money is never going to be a problem for this football club again. Um, even I mean, we've sold nearly half a million shirts this year um, with Park selling more than anybody else below So and Jovanovic. High up there on the shirt sales as well. And this is the team of the year. Perez in goal. A back four of Kovalik, um, Erkan, Elias and Todd Thomas. Perez and Kleber in midfield. That's interesting. Shows that um, Ian did do... Uh, I mean, his average rating isn't anything special. But I've said before, average ratings. I'm not that fussed about the average ratings. I know some of you lot live and die by the average rating. I'm more interested in what I see actually happen on the pitch. And Ian has been fantastic um, and as shown by the fact he's made it into the team of the year. Odd to not see McKenna in there. Um, but Kleber in midfield shows that the game is probably thinking along similar lines to me and a lot of you that Kleber's future is in central midfield. So Kleber and Perez in midfield, Ian and Park supporting Veloso and Jovanovic as the front two. Um, Accolades-wise, I've won manager of the year. Loved, or I won manager of the year last year. Is that what that means? I might well win it again. We've overachieved again. Uh, Veloso has won Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year. Ridiculous to think Sandro Veloso is still only 21 years old. Kleber as signing of the season. McKinna um, as goal of the season. Still only 19 year old McKinna as well. Top scorer was Veloso. Most average ratings of Park. And look at all these competition awards. So World Under 21 Footballer of the Year went to Veloso. Um, English Footballer of the Year, Veloso. Players Player of the Year, Veloso. Premier Division top goal scorer, Veloso. What a clean sweep and young player of the year. He has won every Premier League award plus the under-21 World Footballer of the Year. And just to make sure we had another one as well, Goran Jovanovic has won the Next Gen Award as well, um, which has previously been won by lots of... I mean, Ola Richards finished second in that. And the last player we had to win the Next Gen Award um, was Fazikas, who won it about six seasons ago. And so it's been a little while since we've had a real, real hot superstar Jovanovic is that next one. What a, what a future strike partnership we've got there with Veloso and Jovanovic. Got to keep them at the club. Um, we're now looking back at the team of 2030. I like this. Rather than looking at the all-time best 11, which doesn't change very often anymore, I like the fact it seems to pick a random year for us. So um, the 2030 team is the team that won the championship. We've been in the Premier League nine years now. So this is the team that won the championship title. Um, so who was in this team? The Golden Generation featuring Adam Blamplate, Connor Roberts, Jonathan Akani, Andrew McCartan and Alec Lay. Are they your home Golden Generation? So Blamplate is now playing for Spartak Moscow, um, having done a nice little tour around League One in the Championship. Connor Roberts is at Crew. I mean, regularly playing in the Championship. He's just doing what he's done all his career, just playing regularly in the Championship. Um where else? Where did we get to? Um, Jonathan Akani is playing for Charlton in the Championship. So again, we've had a lot of players who've become regular Championship players here. Andrew McCartan, who only actually left us relatively recently, playing regularly for Middlesbrough in the Championship. Just seems to miss one game a season. That's always on the same day around his birthday. You need to have a word with him. Um, and then Alec Lay uh, is at Wigan. Again, playing fairly regularly in the Championship. Who else was in that team? Ali Basic. See, I forget about some of these players who weren't here, uh, who, who were here relatively recently. So Ali Basic, 28 years old now, um, is playing for on loan at Wren, on loan from Leon, um, who spent a lot of money to bring him away from us. Uh, Jack Green. Does anyone remember Jack Green? He don't, can't imagine he amounted to anything. Uh, Jack Green's back in the Premier League after half a season playing for Bristol Rovers in the Championship. Um, he's not played a lot of football in his career, has he? Still more than half of his career football matches were in that championship promotion season. The one and only time in his career he's been a first-choice goalkeeper. Blamplate, we've looked at already. Ola Richards, we were just talking about him. He's now at Burnley in the championship, former next-gen runner-up. Kieran Hodgkinson, is he a staff member yet? Nope, we need to keep an eye on him. Um, he's playing for Dundee United in the Scottish Premiership. And Nathan Curry, I forget to check on Nathan Curry. He's playing for Austria Vienna in the Austrian Premier League and also not yet a staff member, but we will keep our eye 
on him as well. If we can get Curry, Hodgkinson and Harrison Davies back, that would obviously be the plan. In fact, why is Harrison Davies not being mentioned on here? He was definitely part of that team, but he's not being mentioned at all. Did he not make it into the team of the year in our championship promotions? Oh, no, there he is. So George Francis, remember George Francis, the left back? He's now playing for 1860 München um, in the in the uh, German second tier. Sir Harrison Davies, still not a staff member, 35 years old now, has fallen out of the first team at Sivaspor in Turkey. Um, Darren Collier, he was supposed to be the next bright hope for us, has made it back to England at Rotherham in the championship. Uh, Renan, also at Rotherham now. Um, and doing all right, playing a lot of championship football. Loved Renan and uh, Connor Roberts. We've already looked at Costa Bile. Oh, this is a this is a trip down memory lane. Scoring goals for fun, like he always did. Never did it as a job, but he does it for fun. Um, on Yango's at QPR, played eighty times for Kenya now, playing regularly in League One now for them. And Joe Barr is raking in the cash, playing in China. He's been at Jiangsu in China for years. Look at the amount of money Joe Barr is earning. I mean, he's got 82 caps for Northern Ireland, so maybe he's not stealing a living the way I think he is. But I don't know. That, that guy earning 57 grand a week, he's made some sensible career choices in his life. And Micah Hamilton is now a manager, um, but not one that I'm desperate to bring into my backroom staff. So club vision-wise, Mrs. Wearmouth... Um, has a five-year plan to increase commercial revenue. She is doubling down on the money. You can. This is what. This is what she was in it for all along. All those little three and four million pound investments over the years. They were all leading up to this, where we've got massive bank balance. She's raking in the cash, and this is it now. This is her. Uh, ev everything. Everything comes together. Everything's coming home to roost. Um, she wants a top half Premier League finish and first knockout rounds of the Champions League. Obviously, we're going to do that for you, Mrs. Wearmouth. That goes without saying. We are a Champions League club now. Our three team leaders are Williams, Perez and Park. Is it time for Alex Williams to move on this summer? Maybe it is. Um, end of season team meeting. We'll tell them we're looking for top half, even though we're obviously looking for Champions League now. But that that upsets them. You have to, you have to on this screen, tell them what the game has just told you to tell them. It is a ridiculous thing that needs fixing at FM22 if anyone from Sports Interactive is watching you know that's broken um, right let's have a look for training camp destination um, China's fine we can go and see Joe Barr and then here's confirmation of all the awards Veloso won so there's English Footballer of the Year Players Player of the Year um, Top Goal Scorer by Miles um, Young Player of the Year I did win Manager of the Year this year lovely stuff Mrs. Wearmouth's delighted as she should be and of course, Veloso making it into the Premier Division Team of the Year, the only one of our players who does. Um, the rest of the team is almost exclusively Manchester City players. They look like they're going to take some toppling. Um, still got Pep Guardiola in charge, I think, at Manchester City. They have, who's now 68 years old. Part of me thinks we're just waiting for that man to retire and the inevitable slump that City will go through. And as soon as he retires and this period of dominance ends say period of dominance it's their first premier league win in four years this season as soon as that ends we can jump in and uh, take their place as the dominant force in english football that's the plan at this point talking of plans obviously we have this 80 million pounds to spend we know what the team looks like we know we're not going to be able to bring anybody in to improve that team most likely a right back would be nice the right back i would like is enoch abagai um the only problem is he uh He's earning an awful lot of money at Inter Milan. Um, wouldn't be. He's only just signed a new contract with them, in fact, on £170,000 a week. So I don't think we're getting him this summer. We did actually have an offer accepted for him in January of like £80 million, and he wanted £300,000 a week. We couldn't agree personal terms with him. We wouldn't have been able to pay the fee at the time either. I was just really feeling out a deal for the summer. Um, but I think that kind of, that backfired and prompted Inter to give him a new contract. So I think Abagai is potentially off the table. And if Abagai is off the table with £80 million to spend, I mean, these are the under-18 players that we've got scouted. This We'll sign a few of them. None of them are coming into the first team. 
We just need to keep an eye on who's ready to come through. There's nobody who's ready as a first team candidate. Now, I would take that with a pinch of salt because of this. I think the 30 players who are out on loan are probably, uh, some of them are probably quite close. If we look at the ones who are out on loan, um, can we not sort this by assistant manager recommendation or whatever it's called? Maybe we can't. That's a bit. I don't hover. I don't hover around this screen very often. But like the likes of Simon Hanna, at eighteen years old now, still showing his five star potential. Maybe he. It's time for him to step up. Jamie Much, uh, Hoffman, who we brought in the other year. There's there's plenty. Mark Kelly, we've already looked at. Marcelo Antonio, at twenty years old now. It really is. It's now or never for him. Really, he's been on loan at Brighton and not really played for them. That that could end up being the. Uh, Final nail for him. He's not progressed quickly enough. Uh, Doyce Kirkland's been on the cusp for a long time. He's dropped down to four-star potential now. Um, but if he's ever going to make it, it's got to be into the first-team squad this year, I think. And there's a few of them that fit into that. So we'll have a look at that development centre again once the loans are finished. Um, but I think largely we go again next season with mostly this squad. And um, we might move Alex Williams on. Um, if we get a decent size offer for him, I think he's probably the only one. But the most exciting thing is the age. Is there somewhere that shows me the average age of our team? Because Fazikas is the only player who plays regularly who wouldn't qualify for Young Player of the Year. We've got Perez and Thomas will turn 24 in the next year. Um, and then the next batch is Kovalik, Francisco, Park. I mean, it's it's insane. Can we look on that? Does it show us average age? Um, if we go to stats, team detailed, it feels like it's a thing it should have, whether it does have average age or not. I'm not so sure that it does. If it's on there, it's, one of you would have seen it as I was just scrolling it and will be able to tell us all in the comments what it is. I don't immediately see it looking at that though, which is a bit of a shame. But I mean, you can tell from looking at that, the average age, the average age is young. It is very young. So we'll see. There might not be much video left after this. I, I genuinely don't imagine I'm going to do a lot of transfers. Let's see what... This is where you look at the time. I think this has got 40 minutes left on the video. What the hell has he done? If that happens, it means some of these nightmare scenarios have happened. So, I mean, we're not worried about Norwich. Um, but I'm probably not worried about AC Milan. We are worried about Manchester United coming in for Veloso. That's probably... That's the big fear. If they come in and try and take Veloso, let's hope that doesn't happen. Well, we have some good news, bad news. Good news is um, we've signed a player that 31 other clubs are interested in, including all the usual suspects, all the other big clubs. Uh, Stefano Scarabatoli as an 18-year-old Italian under-20 international um, who was at Middlesbrough. He was on the transfer list because he had a year left on his contract, was refusing to sign. Everyone was in for him. He's come here. So different to the Scott Harris situation when he went to Arsenal um, a couple of years ago, we've now been able to get the man that everybody wanted, the hot 18-year-old talent, a six foot four centre back who can also play left back. Let's face it, at six foot four, he probably isn't going to be playing left back for us. Um, but we have a shiny new centre back. The downside is two boys are now unhappy. Um, we've had big offers for Kovalik and Park. I say big, they're not really big enough. 45 million for Kovalik. Um, he's got a grumpy on because I didn't want to let him go. We had the normal discussion of, well, if we can agree a price, then I'll let you go. I'm trying to trying to smooth things over. Um, and he wouldn't agree to anything above like 60 million. And I'm not selling him for 60 million. It's going to take 100 million plus for me to let Kovalik go. He's an academy boy. I don't want to sell him. Likewise with Park, Norwich came in for 105 million. Bearing in mind last summer, we were turning down, I think the biggest one we turned down was about 190 million for him last year. So I said to him, if they give me 300 million, you can go. I even got down as far as 175 million just to try and keep him happy, which is less than what we turned down last summer. Not having any of it, he wanted to go for 100 million. No. So different to what club policy has been in the past when Gregoire and Abagai were able to force their way out of the club. Uh, Park and Kovalik have been told they ain't going anywhere. So we'll see how this pans out. This At the moment, we've got nobody agreeing or disagreeing. If we see the playing staff 
turn towards either of them rather than against them, then my hand might be forced as the summer goes on. It's only the 11th of June and we'll see how it develops. But at the moment, I am going to try not to sell them. But we've got to keep an eye on dynamics. We can't afford to have a terrible start to the new season because everyone's in a mood because I'm keeping Park against his will. If Sydney ends up being our right winger when we win the Champions League, then so be it. The other thing I just wanted to talk about quickly that people are constantly asking me about, club facilities. Kev, what well, you've got this money. Why don't you invest in the club facilities? The club facilities are maxed out. We always, all the way through the save, anytime we've had the opportunity to have poured money into the club facilities. So you can see we've got um, a very good pitch, a stadium that's maxed out. There's no more expansion capacity on the stadium. Um, we try. We asked for a new stadium early in the summer and Mrs. Weirm have said no. So we're not getting a new stadium. We've got top corporate facilities, state-of-the-art training and youth facilities, a level one youth academy, exceptional academy coaching, exceptional youth recruitment. This is all completely maxed out. Off the pitch, we have the best coaching setup in the entire Premier League. We have... Does that mean we have 98 members of staff? That can't be right, surely. That, that 98 in brackets must mean something else. But you can pick any category. We have got the best coaches. We've not quite got the best scouting setup. Um, we're working on it. Um, and the medical could do with a little bit of a tweak. Again, we're working on it. But we're, we're very well set up off the pitch. So we've brought in one player. We're going to try not to sell those other two players. We don't, there's nothing really off the pitch we need to do. We just need to focus on the 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 like first team playing squad this summer. And at the moment, we've got one in who's realistically not going to be straight in the first team. I wouldn't have thought, and two trying to get out. Well, it seems like neither of them have been uh, have been deterred. An eighty three million pound offer now for Kovalik. We just need to hope Mrs. Wearmouth doesn't do any of our old antics. I think we've got enough money in the bank to be safe from our antics. Park, 116 million. We just reject. Um, and then I guess we will just wait and see if they get even more upset. We hit and continue when we're waiting for knocks on the door again. Come on, let's... Uh, let's uh, what we need... I, I'm actually seriously considering going out and signing Harrison Davies just so that he can come in and calm the two of them down, just march back in as the boss and uh, use his uh, use his experience to smooth things over. Right, have we... Um, we were getting this... We were trying to get this guy who's a wonder kid left back at West Ham. I thought we were actually going to get him, but maybe not. Um, I just set my director of football to try and do it for me. So now West Ham are after Kovalik. Just no. Doesn't look like we've had any further repercussions. Let's check in on the dynamics. No. Okay. We're good for now. Um, am I going to sign? Oh, I can't sign this guy. He's just had a birthday. Ah, he's had a birthday since we started going in for him. So we now can't sign him. Um, oh, well, never mind. Cancelled. Next up then, we finally have a player that we've been trying to sign for the, or almost signed the last couple of transfer windows. Javier Camacho is an 18-year-old Spanish under-19 international striker. Three-star current ability, five-star potential. Um, if we look at him in terms of striker, he's already as good as Francisco, um, Juan Jose. Only 18 years old. We actually had an, a fee agreed back in January of £40 million for Camacho. And I pulled out of it at the last minute because I just couldn't justify £40 million on a player that wasn't going to be playing regularly for us. We've left it go a little bit longer. We've now picked him up for £8 million, still only 18 years old. Um, he is still considered a full-on wonder kid as well. So £8 million for a Spanish under-19 international wonder kid with three La Liga goals from six starts this season. I'll have that. And I think off the back of having that, we're now happy to let Francisco leave. Uh, Francisco at 22, um, he's earning a lot of money. He's only a three-star current ability, so same as Camacho, but only has the three-and-a-half-star potential. I think while we've got teams interested in him, Blackburn have been linked in the media with a £56 million offer. If we can get anything £50 million plus out of them, I will be all over it, but I'm offering him out. And we're not really not really getting anywhere. Let's say we want, we want the 56. 
give me 56 million. We're not going to transfer this. I'm not desperate for him to go, but I'm happy to let him go for that kind of money while he's still got that kind of value. Because I think if he's going to be pushed further down the pecking order by Camacho, if we go another year or two down the line, Francisco only has two years left on his contract, then he's 24 rather than 22, probably has no potential left and we'll be lucky to get what we paid for him. So I think now is the the peak of being able to cash in on him. But in order to be able to do it, we need we need to get an offer. We haven't had one yet. Um, we're just going to try and bring in a, another scout. As mentioned, this is a an ongoing work in progress. Trying to bring in decent level scouts. Um, we have brought in another player as well. Um, this one, my under-18s or head of youth development, somebody just made an offer for him. And I thought, well, I've not really got any plans to sign anybody this summer. So, yeah, if you want, bring him in. I won't do that again. He's only got four-star potential. But Robert Freitag is an 18-year-old German under-18, uh, under-19, sorry, international striker, who you'll probably never see play for us. We've stuck him straight in the under-18s. Lesson learned. The director of football slash um, head of youth development knows nothing. He knows nothing. Look, I know I've massively overpaid here, but I've overpaid for two reasons. One, he's an English wonder kid, and there's always a premium on English wonder kids. Um, and two, the ongoing Kovalik situation. If Kovalik leaves to go to Manchester City, which their current most recent offer is um, £110 million. Pounds, just a flat £110 million. Pounds. There might come a point where Mrs. Wearmouth takes matters into our own hands. But if he leaves... We've got Fazikas or Erkan or Pedro Guerrero as our left backs. That's not Champions League winning. Whereas Azard Primus, um, yeah, he's been playing in the championship for West Ham last year and only played 16 games, but I think he's he's the future. He's probably our long-term left back ahead of Kovalik. Um, so we're we're solving a current problem or a potential problem before it occurs and investing for the future. That's England's future left back right there. And he's now a home player. So that's got him in. Um, we already have a potential replacement for Park if he's forced out. 154 million was Norwich's latest offer for Park. Um, if Park goes, we've got Marcelo, we've got Sydney, um, we've got Diego Perez could go out there. That might even be where Diego Perez ends up um, if we uh, if we end up playing Kleber, McKinna, um, much it will be coming back as well so there's plenty of options for us in central midfield so um, yeah I'm less worried about right wing than I was about left back and now with Primus in I'm not particularly worried about left back either I don't want either of those boys to leave I think we've got a better chance of winning stuff this season if they stay but if they go not the end of the world I don't think at this point it's entirely Kovalik's fault that he's still here um, I think Norwich have gone away when it comes to uh, Park, there hasn't been an offer for them for a little while, but we're still constantly getting offers from Manchester City for Kovalik. The most recent one we've turned down, £161 million. I offered to put the agreement in place to sell him for £80 million, And he said, no, no one will ever pay that. If he'd have just agreed, he'd have gone for half of what we've just turned down. As it is, I'm just going to keep turning them down forever. Chelsea are interested now, but... I mean, part of it, I think if this was any other save, 161 million, he's gone. We can replace him for 160 million. But in this save, we can't. Yes, we've just brought, um, what's his face, Primus in. But he's not going to be as good this coming season as Kovalik is. What might be, I mean, if they want to do 200 million, but the deal goes through in two years, <laughs> we'll take that. That gives Primus time. It is, uh, it's insane. I mean, he's the best player across the defence now. He's done a bit of a Mick Powell, it seems. Has he suddenly jumped up to an elite player or something? No, not even world class yet. No longer got his wonder kid status because he's 22. But Kovalik, quite good at football. And Manchester City clearly determined to add him to their ranks this summer. Interesting to see where Mrs. Wearmouth's line is. Hopefully she doesn't have one anymore. I did promise that once the loanees were back, we'd have another look at the development centre. Um, take note that much is still out on loan. Emil Christensen has now gone out on loan. We've loaned him out to Lens for the season because he's, I mean, he's been here two years and played nine football matches. He needs to go and get some football. So 
He's gone out on loan. Uh, much, though, where is he? Much in the first team squad? Is he still on loan? In my head, Much was still out on loan. It might be Mark Kelly, I'm thinking of. Mark Kelly is still out on loan because he's at DC United. I'm sure... I oh know Jamie Much is back. But he's already. I've already put him in the first team squad. Ignore me. That's why he's not showing on here. So this is the... Um, this is the development centre. These are the first team candidates. We sort them by rank, I guess, makes most sense. Jack Bedwell, we already know about, but realistically, with that potential, probably not going to happen for him. Uh, Bjorn Hoffman, um, we signed a few years ago. Maybe an option to come in as a striker um, if we need one. Vinicius Antonio is our next left back, uh, next right back, sorry. Uh, whether this year is the year for him or he goes out on another loan, I'm not sure. Um, and then we've got a few other guys whose potential is not quite there. Marcelo Antonio, still knocking around. Simon Hanna is one I'm particularly excited about as a future centre-back option for us. Still only 18 years old. So there are a few who are on the cusp. Um, certainly if we were bringing in Antonio and Hanna and the other... We've got two Antonios. I didn't realise there were two of them. But if we were bringing in that calibre of player now, I'd be pretty happy. So... That's why I'm not desperate to bring in loads more 18-year-olds because we've got several of them already. Well, Kovalik has now gone public um, after apparently I was embroiled in a heated argument with him. It doesn't sound like my kind of thing. Um, he is now publicly unhappy, though, unlike Park, who's still only internally unhappy. Still no players agreeing with him or disagreeing with him. So I guess at the moment, it's still nothing majorly to worry about. I think in light of the fact he seems to be really doubling down on it, if they offer 200 million, we'll sell him. It has to be 200 million for now. If he continues to be disruptive, maybe that price will lower. But right now, 200 million, he's done. I need to stop surrounding myself with greedy boys. Apparently Kovalik wants to leave because he'll get more money at Man City. We've just proven we're willing to offer big money. We had an offer accepted for Abagai. Um, we went through the negotiations. Weirdly, he accepted the negotiations, but then has come back and rejected the contract. I don't know that I've seen this happen before. But he's rejected a five-year contract at £275,000 a week. Smashes our current highest salary. Um, our current highest salary being 180000 that Park earns. Um, for reference, he's earning £170,000 at Inter. So we offered him a £105,000 a week pay rise and he still rejected it because the way it terms weren't acceptable. I think that might be the last time I try and sign him, even though we all know I'm going to look at this again next summer and think, oh, well, we could do with a right back. Let's get Abagai in. Unless Vinicius Antonio has a fantastic season, becomes our new right back and we don't need to worry about it anymore, which... Might be what happens. Well, he's really pushing now. He wants to go on the transfer list. So, I mean, as far as... Who's that who's interested? Manchester United interested in loaning him. Yes, good luck. Um, I'll accept his transfer request. However, we're immediately going to slap a £200 million asking price on him. And if they come back and offer it, and so be it. I'm getting I'm getting sad about the situation now because he's an academy boy and it shouldn't be happening. Uh, Fazzy Cass wants to go to Real Madrid as well. They offered me 40 million for him. Um, he just wanted a new contract, so I've offered him a new contract, which hopefully he should sign and that should solve that problem. The park situation, they haven't made an offer for ages, so I'm hoping that one will just go away. If we end up getting through this summer... Only letting Kovalik go when we've already signed his long-term replacement. It's not the worst summer we could have had, I guess. And on the eve of the first day of the season, Park has now gone public with his frustration about not being able to join Norwich. Um, so he, he is now also publicly unhappy at the club. Luckily, still none of our other players are agreeing, so fingers crossed it's not going to be a problem. But that's a little bit of a shame. I thought that situation had resolved itself it's double frustrating that he wants to go to Norwich because Norwich are, are nothing. They're not even predicted to finish in the Champions League. Um, last season, they... How do we do this? Last season, Norwich finished eighth while we finished third. 
I can kind of understand Kovalec wanting to go to Man City because they're the current champions. They've been dominating English football between them and Manchester United for 25 years. I get it. Norwich is just about money. And what Park needs to understand is we'll give him money. He just needs to discuss the tell me how much money you want and you'll get it. We have we have money. Oh, uh, look how much spare wage budget we've got. He can have 400 grand a week if he wants. He just hasn't asked for it. What a moron. Um, so yeah, that's frustrating. Um, but I guess we'll have to see how it pans out and what impact the two of them being grumpy has on the new season. As you can see, we are going into the season with a few injuries as well. McKinnon has just picked up a knock. Uh, Perez, Park, Veloso, all already injured. Um, I'm thinking we give a debut to Vinicius Antonio tomorrow um, because looking on star ratings, as you know I love to do, um, he's already as good as Todd Thomas, um, pretty much as good as Fazikas and Erkan. I think he might well be my first choice right back for the upcoming season. I reserve the right to change my mind potentially, but for now... First choice right back, I think. Um, and that's likely to be the team you see start the season tomorrow. Fingers crossed, him being in it doesn't cause a problem. Still only Manchester City interested, despite the fact he's now on the transfer list, which is interesting. Man United have dropped their interest. But we will wrap that up there. We're not going to be doing any more transfers, I don't think. Um, we got our business done early. We didn't do a lot. Um, just to summarise what we've done, we brought in... Um, uh, the youngster, Scarra Batoli, who's gone out on loan uh, to Motherwell. So he'll be out there for the season. So don't expect to see him this year. Um, likewise, not Camacho. Camacho will actually be using, I think. Um, Freitag uh, came in and went immediately out on loan. He's gone to Dundee United on loan to join up with Kieran Hodgkinson, which is nice. Uh, Camacho will be in and around the squad. He probably jumps above Francisco in the pecking order to play as striker. So expect to see Camacho as the season goes on. Likewise, Primus is definitely going to be in and around the squad. He can play left back or right back. Probably going to be my backup option in both of those positions this season. And uh, we'll see how he progresses as the season goes on. And then, of course, as the... Uh, I was going to say final signing. He was the final signing, wasn't he? He shows on both seasons for some reason, which is a weird one. And um, we've sent a few players out on loan as well. You already know about Christensen going out on loan. Marcelo Antonio went to Partick Thistle as well. Uh, Pedro Guerrero's gone out on loan because if we've got a Primus, we don't need Guerrero knocking about the place. Um, who else who's significant? Uh, Simon Hanna's gone to Hearts on loan. Hoffman's gone to Forest on loan. So there's a few players who've gone out on loans. We might review that in January and bring them back if we need to. But as it stands right now, we are operating on a squad of 25 players. 25 players, only two of them are goalkeepers. That seems like a squad that's big enough to compete for both the Premier League and the Champions League. The weakest links are Williams and Todd Thomas. Um, everyone else who's not at three-star ability yet has at least got potential to push on. Um, so I guess Thomas and Williams will be on their way out in the next year or two. But otherwise, all looking very positive in the squad. So fingers crossed we start the season tomorrow against Bournemouth with a big old win. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.